to order at 601 and we will buzz through our agenda. Everybody remember we have to go to our wagon meal meetings after we complete our work here. So we have to go through quickly tonight, everybody. All right. Are there any adjustments to the agenda? Um, do I have a motion to approve the minutes of Tuesday, March 28th? So moved. So moved. Second. Third. Is there any discussion on the minutes? All right, hearing none, so moved. Is there any board correspondence? Anybody have any correspondence we need to talk about? All right. Nope. Are there any public comments? Do we have any public on tonight? I don't see any. Okay. What's those new? Yellow boxes. All right. So we are on reports to the board. Jamie, you are up first. Uh, just so the board knows, uh, Orca is here tonight in attendance as well. Um, you just wouldn't see them, but they are videotaping us, just so the board knows. Um, and so um, under my report, you have my report in hand. Um, there's a few uh, brief legislative updates that I want to give um, this evening. One, it, the one that I wanted to focus on um, is actually the bill that came out of the House around PCB testing, um, which is House Bill 4, maybe 8-3. I might be making up the number. I just was in a VSA um, update meeting with the House Ed Committee Chair um, and another member of the House Ed Committee on that. So they constructed a bill that would pause PCB testing, um, not forever, but until the legislature took up a comprehensive um, bill on how to fund um, mitigation efforts of PCB um, and looking at school construction in general um, in regards to the fact that what we're finding um, is that a lot of our buildings in the state are um, in significant need of upgrades due to deferred maintenance. Um, and right now, the current PCB testing bill is an 80-20 split. 80% the state covers, 20% is local to mitigate PCBs. Um, but that there, there was a money that was capped. Um, and they expected that cap's going to be hit quickly um, based on PCB findings thus far. So we've had two schools tested, and they both um, were acceptable rates. Um, that was at, bo at both schools of the White River Unified District. We are due to have PCB testing at Rochester Stockbridge schools this coming um, spring slash summer. Um, and so right now, uh, the House bill that passed would call for 100% coverage for mitigation for uh, schools that have received uh, elevated levels of PCB uh, via state testing pause testing efforts until that the legislature can come up with how are they going to fund mitigation efforts moving forward um, the fear right now is is that um, one pcb levels at, at, that the state is looking at as their threshold um, are much lower than national standards anyone that's followed the burlington incident i think that that's been put out there in the in the literature uh, throughout that time and then two we're one of the first we are the first state in the nation to be testing for PCBs and three we didn't really we put out that we put forward the testing before we knew how we were going to be able to mitigate um, levels of PCBs which is a concern for folks um, and certainly there's some colleagues for you guys as board members right now navigating that and certainly I have some colleagues in the superintendent role trying to navigate that. And the concern with all this is, is that if we don't have a plan for mitigation, thank you, Chris, 486. I tend to make up these bill numbers. So thank you for that. Um, that it could result in closures of schools. Um, and we just came off of schools closing uh, due to COVID. So um, that's the worry. It's in the Senate right now. It passed. Um, 
by 11 to 1 vote out of the House ad and then passed overwhelmingly out of the House. There are this bill originally for PCB testing came out of the Senate. There's some worry that it's not going to gain traction in the Senate. Um, so based on the information I provided you and or if you want to discuss it further, I'd be happy to. I believe the Senate's going to take up a vote on this bill this coming week. Um, I do plan to send letters in support of the House bill because I believe it's going to be it's going to provide a more comprehensive approach to how we deal with deferred maintenance. I also believe making certain that we have 100% of money set aside is an important thing when we look at uh, dealing with uh, levels of PCBs in some of our schools across the state. And then, um, you know, finally, I think one of the things too that they're hoping by a pause is to really look at what, it, what makes scientific sense around the PCB thresholds. And do they actually have the threshold dialed in right now that it should be? So I'll take any questions on that. Any other bills? There's and my written report. Michael has his hand up. Michael. Hey Jamie, thank you for that. And I, I'm just wondering if you could just fill us in on a couple of the other bills that you've been tracking, particularly looking at. Um, you know, tuitioning and stuff, since that comes up at our board meetings. You mean in regards to the bill that came out of the House that went into the Senate around? Yeah. Yep. yep. I, I believe that that bill has not gained much traction at the Senate, which is something that I had talked about previous. I have not seen what the Senate plans to put out um, as their version, or if they're just not going to do any action on Carson v. Macon. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's going to be. It's gone really silent in the Senate. That that bill's gone pretty silent. I do know that the other big bill, of course, is the early ed pre K bill, of which I do think there's still opportunity within the House Ed Committee to possibly look at um, 1.0 ADM for funding of pre K programs for school districts that already offer four year olds five days a week full day pre K programming. I do expect that uh, that amendment's going to come out of House Ed. Okay, thank you. But yeah, the, the Senate side of that bill that came out of the House around um, tuitioning to uh, private and independent schools, even though S66 originally was created by the Senate, um, that has gone silent as it's hit the, the Senate Ed Committee. Yeah, I guess the concern for some of us as board members is it's not silent in our communities. And so it, that's going to continue to be something we need to be thinking about and talking about. And um, you know, I feel like I could use some guidance on some of that. So just a, just a sort of an ongoing thought for, for a lot of us. Yeah, no, thanks. I mean, um, as I had said to the full board last month when they were getting ready to take that up out of house, Ed, I thought that a lot of the um, assurances made a ton of sense for protecting um, students who are receiving public funds to go to independent schools. So um, I had shared with the board that that is a bill that I had supported. Um, and I have written out to our, I did write our senators about that bill, um, but I have not heard back um, from any folks in the Senate thus far. Well, I think that the designation, the designation piece is something that'd be worth us following up on as-, as the, des the designation piece is totally out of the bill. Yeah but it's not out of people's minds in our constituency. So it's just something I'd love to talk to you some more about. Yeah, no, that sounds Don't good. need to take it up now. Do, do we need to, um, in some ways, an SU board or district boards uh, weigh in on this bill uh, that appears to be uh, problematical in the Senate? Are you talking about the um, assurance bill? for um, independent school tuition. Yeah. Stay tuned, I'll send you guys information once I receive it. Um, my sense is right now that the group that would be focused on it is Senate Ed, who they, the bill's back with them um, to reconcile and we don't have any local senators on Senate Ed. Okay. Um, the PCB bill, just so everyone's aware, the VSBA did approve a resolution to support that house bill 
on PCB um, abatement and pausing for a more comprehensive plan. And one other comment, I um, want to commend you, and I was excited to read in your uh, monthly report uh, that you're working with the team to provide a full board overview in June of the work occurring throughout the SU to strengthen our explicit instruction and phonetic awareness and phonics through the SU full board celebration of learning. I just think that's phenomenal what's going on and sharing that the board so we understand what's going on and we can support you in any way we can. So thank you. <coughs> All right. Anything else, Jamie? There's a lot of great things happening. Um, I, it was a real privilege. I was in the covering at the White River Valley Middle School um, today, which is always fills my bucket to be in classrooms. Many of you mm -hmm. know that. Um, and so I did see members coming together across the SU um, for their first initial meeting. Uh, and I have referenced this in my report around our portrait of a graduate for WRVSU. Um, and it was really exciting for me to see our students working together and representing all of our districts there in attendance. Um, and so we had representatives from each district there, teachers, um, administration, students, and as I told you, one of, the, one of the things as we start to map this out will be certainly how do we bring that group together with the full board um, and then the greater community. So know that information is going to be forthcoming. Nice. Very nice. All right. Any more questions for Jamie? Okay. Onda. Thank you. Um, so you saw in my update for this month, April is uh, turned into a, uh, a very full assessment month. We are doing the third of our three benchmark assessment windows for um, English, language, arts, and math uh, in kindergarten through eighth grade. So uh, students and teachers have been working on that over since the beginning of April, um, and we'll finish that up before they head out um, for break at the end of the week. Is that where we are? Yeah, we're in April. <laughs> Two different breaks. Um, so that's good. And then we've also started in on the um, the Vermont uh, State uh, Summative Assessment, uh, trying that out in a, some of our schools and in some of our content areas, mostly seeing it in science, um, as that's not a subject that we're testing. Uh, on track my progress is sort of separating those two things out. So just uh, a huge kudos to our uh, our site uh, test site, test coordinators at the building level um, and the teachers who have been working on that because it has not been without its bumps, which we are hearing statewide. Um, and there's just uh, a lot of perseverance and, and really good attitudes around um, you know taking longer than it should to log in and things like that. So really um, happy with our teachers and, and students for, for handling all of that. Um, and then the other big thing that we did at the, I think at the end of um, March, we didn't talk about it then, was survey all of our uh, staff on professional learning that they've engaged in this year, um, looking at both what they um, participated in as part of what we called their SU-wide course, an opportunity to, um, to uh, work and learn together with folks often in the same job, but you know, on the other side of the SU from them. Um, and, uh, and then also, ha you know, the, the learning that they do within their own buildings on either um, kind of faculty meeting days or those other um, half day in services where they don't travel necessarily or meet with people but are with their own school community. So we got a lot of good feedback there. What worked well? Where can we improve? What are people thinking they need for next year to continue to grow their practice? So we looked at that as an administrator team. Um, with all the principals here around this table two weeks ago um, and uh, are using that both to think about what's happening across our whole SU and then helping principals as they plan for next year within their schools. Nice. Great information. Any questions, guys? <laughs> Two comments. Oh. I do. Anda, this is Michael. Hi, Michael. Uh, I'm really curious when you get to dig down into what they thought was successful, what worked, it didn't work. Is that is that information that you're going to break down for the um, boards or the full board? 
Uh, yeah, it, you know, as you might imagine, it, it really varies by sort of individual yep. and experience. And, you know, for example, we offered courses that were, you know, in person in one location, in person but rotating locations. Um, or uh, completely virtual. And it tended to be that most people picked the thing that they wanted. If they knew what it was, they picked the one they wanted and they thought that worked really well for them. So we've got outdoor educators who love going around and seeing the other outdoor education spaces. So for them, a rotating um, location was great. For other yeah. folks, you know, being able to just log in right at the time it's going to start and do some, you know, learning without having to travel anywhere else in ASU, that was great for those people. And then some people really wanted to learn in person, are tired of learning online, and they went to, oftentimes, you know, our central, like South Royalton, one of our central locations, and did their two hours of learning there. So I think you'd love to find uh, trends that sort of pushed one way or the other, but um, I think we did find that people, there was there were differences. Um, we did break down some of the data by employee group, so um, thinking about both our paraeducators and our teachers and what they may need that's the same and what they may need that's different given their, you know, what their roles are, their experiences. Um, so certainly we can share some more information. I, um, I have lots of data and I try to be careful of how much I, I inundate you all with it, but I'm, I'm happy to share some more details if that would be helpful. Well, I mean... It, it, maybe it's not of interest to the full board. I'm interested because it's a huge undertaking. And I, I, I'm, I'm not asking because I have concerns. It's just, you know, when you've got that many people with that many varied interests over that big a geographic area, it's really tricky. And I'm just, you know, I'm just always curious about it, how we continue to make that as successful as possible. So, you know, at some point I'd love to talk to you about it, but it's not out of uh, concern at all. Okay. Just want to make sure I understand that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Two comments. First of all, I'm a believer in asking questions, and very few organizations ask the questions of the key people of their organizations. Those are the people that work in their organizations. Uh, why don't? Why are they hesitant? Because they're a little concerned about what they might learn from asking questions to the people that are doing it. And I want to com commend you for asking the questions. We're not afraid to find out how well we're doing, and nobody knows better uh, of the teachers and the support staff. And we can learn so much together. So again, I think that's a wonderful organizational tool to grow and to be a better organization. And I commend you for being uh, seeing that as a positive, even though you can't control the results, and some of the results can <laughs> surprise you, but you learn from that. Um, the second observation I'd like to make is that your report is chock full of enthusiasm and intelligence and commitment uh, and passion from through, th throughout the whole organization. And the strongest organizations aren't the top down, in my opinion. If we have lousy leadership, we're in trouble. But the strongest, the best organizations are those that have strength throughout the organization, <coughs> from the bottom up to the top down. And your report is chock full of that, that enthusiasm, that participation, that commitment of our teachers and special staff, um, of, of believing in what they're doing, interest in what they're doing, and, and, and wanting to do it better. And I don't think we should take that for granted for a second here. Um, this is something that's been building, and um, I've only been here for a couple years, but it, it's very, very impressive, and we want to continue to be able to support that effort um, if we're going to be the best we can be. So uh, kudos to you. Thank you. Cool. I will say I'll share. I got a, you know, I had a message from a teacher last week at the end of the week saying, could you just get in there and just look at my results for the, the math track, my progress? I feel like there was a lot of progress. I just want to get another set of eyes. You know, like that's the sort of um, sort of cooperative and collaborative work that I just I love doing with folks. Um, and I was up, you know, with another teacher today who was just thinking about, like, I just want to think about, you know, monitoring progress in a little bit of a different way. Can you come up and, you know, talk that through? And so I think, you know, that's the stuff that, right, it's kind of the one-on-one -on -one work, but it, it really is that, that stuff that makes it really um, exciting to be able to work with folks. So um, I think it's good. I think on the, on the getting data from people, it, it's also helpful when we had people asking, wait, why are we testing in April? Don't we usually do this in June? I said, oh, I asked you last year. Here was your feedback. You said June was too hard. April, you'd use the data more, and I think that's also helpful yes. to people because when you're in the midst of it, you can, you know, you can forget sort of what it, what it, what we talked about last year, and so um, it's always helpful to have that when you're making decisions. 
And I have one third point in a bit quick. So, I have a 715 meeting. Let's go. Um, <laughs> the, thir the third point is the strength of managing by walk around. That's the whole, that's a, that's a buzzword going way back to the, when I was in management. And, and you see throughout the staff, the leadership team out there, in the schools, in the classrooms, um, listening, um, asking questions, observing, um, being there. And I think that's another sign of this organization being very, very healthy. Anybody else? Anything else, guys? Okay. So we are on. Hi. And you're up. <laughs> I'm up. <laughs> um, so again, each month I do a, a spotlight on a rule change. Um, and I heard at our last month's meeting, and I've heard it a couple other times, um, people talking about vocabulary and our acronyms <laughs> and, and things like that. So um, I thought, okay, I think I'll do a spotlight on you know some of the vocabulary that we use most often or that you'll hear most often um, or have been. And so that's, um, that's what I focused on um, for the rule change, was giving you a lot of information about about the terms in the vocabulary that we use a lot of, um, at least most recently. Um, also, I just wanted to just highlight that, you know, we're continuing to put together um, summer programming. Some of our um, plans for our writing intervention has kind of been on, been on pause, because uh, we just recently got word um, that the um, Project Read, which was the company that we were going to use for the Framing Your Thoughts writing intervention, um, is being bought by Hegarty, another uh, company. And so they just weren't sure about, um, after our, their initial training, like what materials or consultation would be available because of this like merger that's that's happening. Um, so we're we're trying to decide where we're going to go next with that. Um, I did have one um, resignation due to retirement. Um, long time, wonderful um, employee, um, Diane Doubleday, who is an occupational therapist in our supervisory union, um, is going to be retiring. We're just going to miss her expertise. Um, so at the much. end of the year. At the end Not of the right year. Now. Not right now. No, 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 no. At the end of the year. Um, and so um, just know I have an ad out already um, for her position for next year. And then there's the last piece was, um, I just wanted to give you um, just <coughs> an idea of what um, extended school year services um, look like. Um, it's also called for the acronym ESY. Um, and it's, it's students um, who attend summer intervention um, over the summer um, as part of their IEP services. Um, and really the, the um, what is required for that is that they, um, that there's data around regression um, throughout the school year. So it's really to kind of help them maintain skills so that they're ready um, to start at the place where school ended in the fall. Um, even though sometimes, you know, kids really gain over the summer. Um, but these were just the numbers from last summer. Um, again, that was my first summer here, um, where I kind of knew from the beginning who was attending. Um, and so we'll just see how those numbers um, continue throughout the, throughout the years. But just so you have an idea of who attended last summer. And right now we're in the, the midst of planning and um, um, this summer, and so I don't have those exact numbers yet. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Question. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard for me to understand the graph. Okay. Uh, it shows participation. Right. Um, so I'm looking at our side, which I represent, yeah. and it's very low. But it is. is it low because there's very few students that need intervention? Or is it because their parents or they're busy, whatever yeah. the case is, aren't participating in this wonderful yeah. opportunity? So it would be helpful for us to get a, a sense across the SU of not only the numbers, but the percentage of the kids that need it as far as your uh, evaluation is mm -hmm. and that actually participated. And we'd love to see sure. 100%. Um, yeah, so no, actually all of these numbers 
look pretty accurate. Like this is what I would expect for the number of students um, that are serviced via IEPs in each of those districts. Like our SUDS, the district is really low. Um, your numbers are really low to begin with, so I wouldn't expect you to have high numbers participating. Okay, so that's not a bad thing. That's not a bad thing. No, none of these are bad. None, none, none of this is no, bad. No, this is meeting the need. Yes. Your yes. Uh, education yes. and support. Absolutely. Thank you. Yep. All right. Any other questions, guys? All right. So, Tara. Good evening, everyone. You have my report, which outlines what's happening in the business office throughout the month of May. And then if there's any questions, I'll be happy to try and answer them. I had either a question or accommodation, but I read in Christie's report, uh, it details the, the, the PDFs files and I looked at your file and you had a new title which was bus manager and I'm wondering with the uh, with a new bus company whether you have a new title or whether that was just was a short shortage of yeah okay all right well then I'll no I'm still the business manager it's just an abbreviation <laughs> <laughs> you want to be a thought. bus manager no I don't want no. to be the bus manager <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so <laughs> thank you all right um, Fred. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Uh, we have had 110 students participate uh, in Cognia VT CAP, uh, mostly with science, as Rhonda said. Uh, but we've had some ELA and some math uh, at the high school. This is week two for us. Um, Started in Bethel last week and uh, uh, working our way around the SU. There have been a lot of issues around the state. It appears that we have not run into those nearly as much as anyone else. We hope our luck holds. And uh, I think it was a great idea for us to avoid the very first day. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Honda. <laughs> And uh, as Anda said, uh, our, our teachers, proctors, as they're called, in this uh, system have done a great job and um, are doing the best uh, under the circumstances. Mm -hmm. Have some other stuff in there, uh, specifically about uh, enrollment. And uh, I will entertain any questions about any parts of my report or anything else in this department. Questions, guys? I add something? So you all will be receiving population projections from um, NESDEC uh, in your local district reports uh, in meetings this coming month. Um, this is our first time partnering with NESDEC to complete uh, population projections for the SU. Um, what they have s shared with Ray and I is that they this is based off 2020 census data. Uh, but they do feel like over time that they're going to be able to really get um, that they're going to feel like that their algorithm in regards to their their band is going to narrow in. The more times they do it, the more accurate yeah. they will become. And so I just want you to know, like this is first shot at them. I think we could use them over trends, but you know, again, understand that you know that statistically it's going to become much stronger the more we do it. So we have about 1,700 students total. Roughly 1,300 of those are in our buildings. 400 tuition students, about half attending public schools and half attending independent schools. And uh, through about 10 years out, enrollment's projected to be fairly flat, uh, but a bit up. So it all That's seems good. like good news. All right. Any other questions for Ray? All right. Um, policy committee. Uh, we had a meeting just before here. We um, made some changes to the board um, of board. civility and 
code of conduct. Board civility and code of conduct. We went through that, that and then the, the committee um, made some more changes. So that will come hopefully. I think it'll, my sense is, I don't want to speak for the committee, but it'll come out of committee and be on your agenda next month. That is our intention. Um, and superintendent evaluation committee, we have another meeting on this Thursday, the 20th. So that committee is moving right along. Um, that was warned as well. Yep. Just so everyone, committee members, seven o'clock. Seven o'clock, yes. We need a Jenny, so we're, we're doing a seven o'clock meeting. Everybody on the committee agreed that that night work, that time worked. Great. Um, and we have policy adoptions, act to adopt the WRVSU special education policy. So this was warned for action. It hasn't received any feedback uh, contrary to what you have in front of you. So hopefully you'll be ready to, to move on it. Annette will be appreciative, I think. <laughs> you want a motion, that, Kathy? Yes, please. I make a motion to adopt the special educa the WRVSU special education policy. A second. Is there any discussion on the policy? Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed? And the ayes have it. The, we have adopted the WRVSU special education policy. Thank you. Um, we have discussion on fiscal audit. So we talked about the audit at the meeting last time. So this is the final draft, which included the completed single audit on our ESSER 2. And I had put in the cover email when I sent it out to you that I'm happy to report that there were no findings. Is there, is there any discussion, discussion on the audit? Anybody, Anybody have any questions, questions for, Tara for Tara or Jamie? I make a motion, motion to, accept to accept the audit. <laughs> Second. So it has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Right, hearing none, all those in favor of saying, oh, adopting the 2122 fiscal <laughs> audit, say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, so the 21-22 fiscal audit is passed. Thank you all. Congratulations, Tara, that's great. Thank you. And public comment, is there anybody on for public now? Um, anybody has any public comment that is on the call right now? Um, no comment. No That's comment. Right. Thank you, Matt. Um, okay. Resignation of new hires. We just talked just about it. We just talked about that. I am interviewing the last special educator this week. So we should have one hopefully moving forward. Okay. And so if you have an executive session for later relations? Yes, yeah, just to talk about our okay. action. I need a motion to go into executive session for labor relations. And you can probably release the rest of the admin. Yes. Yeah. I make a motion to go into executive session and invite Jamie to join us. Tara, I think you can even go. I think I've got all the numbers down, so. Second. Okay, thank you. Good night, everyone. Night. Have a good night. Have a good night. All right, so I make a motion to approve the collective bargaining agreement between the WRV SU uh, board and the WRV Education Association support personnel for the years of 2023 through 2026. Second. All right, is there any discussion on the motion? All right, so all those in favor say aye. 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 Any nays? I abstain. All right, so the ayes have it. And we have Yay. an agreement. 
Congratulations. Mm -hmm. All right. So. That's exciting. Thanks, team. Is there any other business tonight? No. All right. Uh, future agenda items. Uh, so there's some future agenda items. If you look um, in the data calendar that I sent you, you're going to be receiving local assessment data next month. Yes. Um, so that's certainly one of the agenda items that you're going to have is you'll get our SU-wide Track My Progress data um, in May. Okay. One thing I didn't say, we do have a mentor committee meeting scheduled yes. for Wednesday night. Um, um, we also... That's a really good... Uh, I want to say booklet, but it's virtual. So I don't know if the virtual booklet that you put together is really helpful and really good. Thank you. Now we just need to put the mentors to it, and we'll have a we'll have a plan. <laughs> I was going to suggest as a future agenda item uh, discussion of um, <coughs> FY23 goal achievement. Remember, we establish SU goals, and I think towards the end of this calendar not calendar year, but school year, we should spend some time evaluating how we did. And maybe spend a little time seeing if we want to do another full board retreat. Yes, that's... Yeah. All right. There's a, w, uh, a VSBA uh, uh, seminar, whatever, webinar coming up on uh, board retreats, too. Okay. I think it's in May. Good tip. Oh, just a shout out, and I'll continue to do it at local meetings. A reminder to SU board chairs that we've registered you to attend our mandatory, uh, mandatory by state statute training um, with the VSBA and VSA, um, which is upcoming before our next full board meeting. So. Board chair should have received a confirmation of that. Hopefully, I asked Christy to register you. What happens if we don't go? Do we get kicked off? <laughs> you could only wish for that. <laughs> you have to do two meetings then. <laughs> I think somebody failed to mention that when they talked about. Uh, this is my job description. <laughs> it should be a really good time. I'm actually, I'm really excited it's in person. It has not been um, for the last oh, few yeah? years. Yeah, yeah. it's Where in person. Um, all, I'll send all that information to you guys again, but it's in Burlington. Yeah, the one last year was virtual, and it was, it was interesting, but it was hard to, like, it, it was hard to, it was hard to stay focused on. So, Eric, get ready. You're co-chair. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, if there is nothing. Maybe it's in Vegas. I thought would be cool. I'd go. That would even be more reason for him to be co chair. <laughs> for me, anyway. All right, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. All right, so we're adjourned, guys. See you on the next meeting if I'm. Reminder 7 15. Should, shouldn't take too long so we can complete ratification. All right, bye guys. See you next month if I don't see you okay. before.